Hello everyone, welcome once again to the 24-bit podcast and we are recording this just a day after the launch of one of the latest devices in the Kenyan market, that is the Oppo Reno 8T. The Oppo Reno 8T is the latest member of the Oppo Reno 8 series. I believe we've discussed at length about Oppo's Reno devices on this podcast previously and I'm not sure, did we talk about the Reno 8? No. On this no, podcast? Yeah, we actually we didn't talk. We mentioned Java. I don't think yeah, uh, we never maybe did. we just anyway the... uh, whatever the case we are here today to talk about the Oppo Reno 8 and as usual I have the usual suspects excellent you know, Techish to come and Nick Canali from Tech Trends Techish with a hyphen between Tech and Ish right E-C-K Techish I'm going to you to me man you got E-C-K yeah I, I've seen that <laughs> anyway I'm Emmanuel Chenze I write my uh, various things on AndroidKenya.com and yeah first things first uh, we've all been having this oppo reno 8 so I, yeah reno 8 t what does yeah. the c stand for <laughs> um, it's like when apple was doing the uh, s model s yeah. and one plus was doing the t's, t's uh, makes oh, sense for one plus because oppo and one. yeah they are yeah. from the same they are from the same family okay mm. i want us to do this sequentially um since you all have the devices you've done unboxing you are mm-hmm. uh, on your way to publishing your reviews. Let's start with your first impressions. When you first got the Oppo Reno 8T, uh, what was your first thought? So, uh, first of all, I think we should explain that there's an 8T, yeah. a 4G, and an yeah, 8T, and 5G. 5G. And we, we both have, have the 5G version, but and also, we also have a unit for the 4G version. Yes, yes. So, I have the 5G version, and uh, my first impression was how light mm-hmm. and thin it is. I think the Reno 5 was the first device that looked like this, Amma. The Reno 5. You remember the for Reno 5? Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Uh, so I think, I think they went... to date it remains like our best uh, Reno. Uh, uh, yeah. I think this one could top that, but the processor, we'll talk about that anyway. So my first impression was how thin and light it is. I have uh, the, what's the, Xiaomi 12 Pro. I have the Techno Phantom uh, X2 Pro. Mm-hmm. And I have another set of devices that have launched in the past, but immediately I unbox this. I put my SIM card in it because of it. it just feels sleek. In a feel poor sana kono. That sounds generic, but it's the truth. It feels so good on the hand. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think for me, it has to be how Oppo managed to actually achieve the um, the curved screen on this phone. Uh, the, was, yes. Yeah, uh, that was one thing that really caught my attention, mm-hmm. and also something else Dixon saying how light this device is yeah light and very thin yeah, yeah exactly and we uh, uh um if you notice uh, i show you i showed you guys the 4g version yeah it's a uh, uh, it's um you know design was they, they look a little bit different mm-hmm. but again it's also very light as well so i mean both devices the 4g and the 5g both are very light devices so yeah that, that was my first impression good um as 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 Dixon has shared, my first impression of this device was just the marveling at the overall design, like it's really well done. Um, if you're listening to this podcast, uh, I don't think photos on the internet do this device justice. So mm-hmm. whenever you are in a mall or a, uh, where there's a shop that has this on display, or anywhere in town or wherever you are, and you can like go pop in somewhere and get to experience this device i recommend that you do because even what we say we might not describe it that well and whatever we see on the internet might not do it justice it actually pays to to see it in person like the craftsmanship on this device is so well done like both of them the 4g and the 5g variant in fact um i have two impressions to share uh i got some hands on in the 4g variant and them the case that op was included yeah the box is very nice i don't know why they did as bad with the 5g the 5g has a nice case which is transparent to show to show all that back shimmery design but the 4g has yeah has such a such a nice nice case but overall the design like oppo did itself on this device and i was looking at the at the pricing from the press information they shared this morning damn uh, right now, if you ask me, this is the complete package. Mm-hmm. We've 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 uh, talked about very cheap phones on this podcast. We've talked about mid rangers on this podcast, and we've talked about very expensive for, uh, phones on this podcast. Some that can even fold. 
and we've always had catches uh, as far as i can tell other than a few nit uh, nitpicks we have with some of the specifications mm. all around mm. this is the one device that for me is just an outright recommendation for a buy pricing is right and uh, where my first impressions uh, were the, the design is just fantastic and um, this is the best implementation of a waterfall display which is what the android term for developer term for curved display this is the best implementation of a curved display i've seen in a while the curve angle is not so large that you'll but you feel it, right? the, you'll feel it or uh, you'll experience accidental touch mm -hmm. it's just there it's nice aesthetically because i haven't found functionality around it we talked about the phantom we've not talked about the phantom mm -hmm. x2 series yet but we mm -hmm. we touched on it during the our round Monthly, of, uh, of what happened in january and the phantom x2 does have a curved display but it does have built-in functionality in this case this is just aesthetic and you just don't need anything you just want it like that because mm -hmm. it looks good uh photos of the curves will do it justice i was looking at the photos i've taken and you can actually see the curve display and how it wraps around uh, to the frame and now we have a glittering shiny frame on an oppo device been a while since we saw that but yeah my the one thing that caught my eye was the design. Everything just oozes premium. Yeah. Like, and the, yeah. Yeah, and the thing, you spoke of the design. I think one thing that Oppo has remained constant with the Reno series. I mean, I mean we've used like all the Reno series devices yes, you know, yes, since yes. Oppo introduced this series, you know, in Kenya. And I think one thing that Oppo has remained constant is the design of the, the Reno series devices. I mean, mm -hmm. all, Oppo always gets it right. I mean, that's one thing I really... The Renos are just always... Uh, yeah. I think this is the first Reno that has a large screen. Amma? Um... No, they've they've been most big. of the Renos were six point four inches. Yeah, 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 exactly. yeah. So this this is the first Renault with a larger screen than I think most of the Renos we've used. All the other Renos have always had six point four, six point four, six point four. Yeah, and when you look at it, it doesn't look like uh, it, but it doesn't look like yeah, it, it, yeah, it, 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 yeah, uh, it still feels it, compact. It still feels the, almost the same size yeah, yeah. as previous Renos. It feels a little longer though, uh, like taller. Yes, in, in uh, the aspect ratio in your metrometer yeah. makes it feel uh, taller. I think uh another thing that has impressed me with the 5g version is the bezels yeah, the yeah. top and the bottom mm -hmm. bezels they are very even when you use the 4g version is when you realize that the bezel, uh, the bezels are not sorry mm -hmm. the bezels are not equal like there's a huge chin on the 4g version you also like the bezel <laughs> bezels <laughs> yeah. yeah so i'm impressed with that uh the slight curvature on this uh, on the sloping displays but the fact that the bezels are almost a hundred percent equal throughout yeah does, does the 4g have a headphone jack uh G i don't know if there's a headphone yeah there's a headphone ah, jack explains oh we don't have a headphone yeah jack. we don't have a headphone uh, jack oh, i didn't even notice yeah. that <laughs> yeah uh hope has kept that relationship going because i have the reno 7 4g it does have a four uh, headphone, uh, headphone jack but the, but, but the one thing i like here is um there's something I, I i i mentioned in my in my um, in my article um this device is the first from oppo that is going to get the guaranteed four versions of android oh, yeah. oh it's guaranteed for android yes version. yes yes oppo nice. made an announcement last year mm -hmm. that going forward and uh, they're going to support their devices for across four years for uh, four major mm. versions of android and five and years five of years security, of software. yeah security updates mm. but they had a kicker that the devices they launched from 2023 onwards ah. this globally has been launched this month in fact our market is one of the global yeah, launch markets that. yeah it's we are some of the first people to get this device anywhere in the world so yeah if you are going to buy this device today uh, oppo is guaranteeing you that they'll yeah, run they you uh, through uh, the upcoming android 14 15 16 and 17 so you're going oh, to oh. to get and uh, we've been using reno since the very start yeah. the all the units we have have all received very many updates, very many updates even before yeah. this commitment yes. came uh, so at the very least if it's come it comes to keeping their word we know they can keep their word and now we have one plus doing uh, a similar stretch of four years of major OSs, five of security updates. Samsung does the same. Mm. Uh, and now we have Oppo. Who else? 
Nokia backtracked so Nokia, HFMD Nokia. Global is, is now no longer where it was three four years yeah. ago so we don't know how that goes we're hoping Realme which is the only holdout of the BBK brands mm, will we'll also jump on we'll join them the other thing now uh, the display and the curvature and all of that catch your eye when you unbox this device but when you start using it yeah. that screen is glorious yeah uh, oh, now yeah. moving if you have to move from our first impressions yeah. into the features of the device mm. uh i don't know what your opinions are but for me that screen yeah. is glorious if i know we are few these days everyone prefers watching videos but those of us who believe in the written word and love just reading stuff it's like the, okay it can't beat foldables because for, for me foldables are the best place to read your articles but the next best thing is on a screen like the one on the Oppo Reno 8T. It's fantastic. Uh, text here is very crisp. And then I've left mine on 120 hertz. Yeah. This uh, goes all the way to 120 hertz. I've left mine there mm. and I haven't seen much of a difference in terms of the battery life. So I'm inclined for the entire time I'll be spending with this device, it will stay on 120 because everything just feels in place and nice. Yeah, like it's there and the other thing yes we don't get the 3.5 minute headphone jack on the 5g yeah. and you get it on the 4g but at least on the 5g there's a micro sd card slot oppo has been playing an on and off game with that with the slot uh, so yeah uh, it's back on this device and the versions that we have are 256 gb right yes yes uh, i think they're only launching a 256 model yeah the model both for the low uh for the 4g and so from my last three devices, which have been 256 GB devices, I almost never need a micro SD card. So, but in case you ever need this. In case you're another, a photographer, you want to move your stuff. Yeah, yeah. Now, uh, I'm going to give you the flow to tell me what your favorite features are. Uh, I can I can start. Yeah, uh, just one. I know this device has so many features. One, then we'll go okay, to so other features. Okay, this is the same one. Yeah. Well, we've already talked about the design. <laughs> okay so the display is one of my favorite features uh uh the design is another of my favorite features mm -hmm. which i'll touch on that but something that i've constantly uh, come to realize is i i use a samsung phone i use an oppo phone i use a xiaomi phone i use techno and infinix phones but every time i set up my oppo phone yes there are some things that you need to set up like the shelf uh you disable that then you set up the drawer for the uh launcher but every time I use an Oppo phone, I like the software. Yeah, it is so nicely done. I, I, I'm not, I'm not going to say I in a bloatware this time around. There is bloatware, <laughs> but I really like the software. I like that Oppo goes a, a long way to implement certain features that people don't necessarily deem necessary. For example, when Google launched Material U, where you could custom uh, the colors of the phone could change based on the wallpaper you've put. How many companies have implemented that? Mpaka Sai, you don't see it on uh, Techno, you don't see it on uh, Infinix, you don't see it on Xiaomi. But on Oppo, immediately you change your wallpaper, your color, you can choose to have the colors pick uh, that. So every accented color on your device picks uh, the color of your wallpaper. Right now, I, I love software because there's a guest mode on Oppo uh, or software. So if I am giving someone my phone, I just switch it to guest mode. They can't even make a call unless I give them administrator privileges. They can't access certain apps and all that. Uh, another thing I like about uh, the software version of it is the customization. I think uh, that's the word I should go with that Oppo has done to make the 120 hertz feel 120 hertz. Mm -hmm. So when you're scrolling, you actually feel you're using 120 hertz. Unlike other phones where you scroll and you don't really get to tell the difference. Yeah. So for me, software um before we go to you nick i have some feedback to share about that software um oppo's approach to software has been one of the best uh in the market actually i think just up there with one ui from samsung yes but now i don't know what happened with the reno ht this has brought us a few steps back. Um, mm -hmm. I don't know if you noticed, we have a browser app from Oppo. Yeah. Oh, I did not get that. Yeah. There is. I, I already deleted. Yeah, oh. Probably deleted, but mm -hmm. there is a internet. internet. It's yeah. called yes. internet. So there's a browser app. I store app uh, market. And then there's an app store. Mm -hmm. uh, really, Oppo, we shouldn't be going that way. I 
tend to understand why they would insist on these features and I don't know how permanent this is but uh, it's a step back because mm-hmm. now right off the bat you have two browsers in your device. Oh, there's two messages up. Yeah, uh, yeah, these are messages yeah. up as well. Yeah. Uh that's kind of So they have theirs and then you obviously yeah. you use For Google. me as far as the software goes, that's the only like uh thing I'd take away from it. Mm-hmm. Those added apps. Okay, some people might like them, but I don't know. Opa has been um focusing on it has been has been giving us good devices with good software for like the last half a decade that have been devoid of their own stuff mm. so i don't know if there are any people who are held on to those things and would we argue for familiarity and all of those mm. so it's an interesting thing to say and it's also an annoying feature nick yeah, for me i thought yeah it's, a, yeah. yeah it's an interesting interesting thing to see about see but again it's also really interesting to see oppo really push pushing their products to to users of oppo devices like what they're doing now with the reno series yeah but now back to my favorite features it's um i love what oppo has done with color s13 mm-hmm. actually i've been using i mean you compare for example color is with what techno is or, or things always offering us with uh what's what's the software again it's called it's a uh, ios yeah i mean mm-hmm. as much as there's bloater but see your mingi sana you know mm-hmm. and they're not that annoying you know like compared it's not to overdone yeah, it's not overdone exactly um and also something else of course the display is one of my favorite uh, as a disc dixon said huh? You know the other, the other phones you can want 20 but when you use it feel like you're using a mm, the, the refresh yeah. yeah but that's something you can this you can this, actually feel this display is so smooth there yeah. actually feel like yeah i'm actually you know scrolling through the app using a 120 hertz i think hertz. it goes with animation speed yeah, yeah well mm-hmm. done yeah. so oppo really did well here and of course they got everything right with the design uh of course the battery life yeah mm-hmm. yeah the battery I life love the really, battery life yeah. yeah really good it's 4800 for the for the 5g, 5G then 5000 for the um 4G. So yeah, quite impressive from Oppo on this one. Uh now you can't talk about battery without talking about the fast charging. Yes. Because the 5G gets 67 watt fast charging which is the highest we've ever seen from Oppo. Yeah. And it's good. For this market again. Yeah, yeah. 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 Uh, it's good. Yeah. And the 4G gets a 33, 33 watt fast yeah. charger, yeah. which is fine. Um I've used Oppo's 30 watt charger since the A93. You remember that yeah, one that yeah. we really liked? Mm-hmm. I think it's the only a series phone we've ever dedicated our whole podcast to yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah. it was so good mm. uh, so i've used uh, oppo's 30 watt offering since then and it was good on the a93 it, sh- it should be good on the reno i haven't mm. charged up the reno hd 4g but on the 5g it's fantastic you just like you know when you're about to step out of the house and you remember you hadn't charged your device so you plug it in uh go pick whatever you need to pick come yeah, your hair whatever yeah. by the time you need to step out tie your shoelaces or whatever <laughs> it's good okay. like your device will last you the day whatever percentage it was that for me is is amazing but also oppo has spoiled us that is also what i've yeah. come to expect from the brand in the recent years we are just fresh from using the reno 8 uh, 5g and that another 65 watt charger yeah, yeah. which gave us around the same experience and it has this optimized night charging so if you plug it in night. at night mm-hmm. automatically it detects it's, it's at night and charges at a slower rate so that it's ready for you in the morning so you don't have to worry about overcharging even though that's not a concern for batteries today and also you have an option to turn it off yes yeah yeah another thing uh, oppo introduced with the battery for the first time is battery health mm-hmm. this is something you see a lot with iPhones You, when you go to buy an iPhone someone tells you show me the battery health so Oppo will now be showing uh, users battery health you go into battery battery health and it will tell you your maximum capacity as of now is 100% mm-hmm. then over time as the battery expectedly degrades because your battery should normally degrade over a period of time Oppo is actually I think Oppo has the highest charge cycles before degradation is noticeable because normal companies say 800 cycles Oppo has been saying 1600 cycles or 1800 cycles so maximum uh, you can now see maximum capacity of your battery and under that is where you get what Chenzo was saying about optimized night charging yeah um there's one thing when you are talking about the design of the device that you left out the device is noticeably thin we've come from the yeah. block yeah, 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 uh, yeah. block look of the Reno 85G and the Reno 8T is nothing like that it's thin very like thin. thin and thin. i think the illusion comes from that uh what is it called the metallic bar around the ring yeah around. yes so it, the curvature on the front display and the curvature of the back display with a slight metallic around it 
makes you believe it's way thinner than it probably is yeah yeah we are sorry, we are also the lightness uh, yeah. how light it is makes you think uh, this is a very thin phone yeah i'm saying we are sorry if, if anyone is listening they can't they won't be able to actually see this, this device but we've done a few videos you know, uh, we've done video videos uh, video i think we can link technology. some of the uh, review videos yeah uh, good um no one is talking about a uh, one of my favorite features on this device Please. it's often overlooked on devices uh, but really it stands out where you can find it did you people notice we have two speakers on this phone oh yeah, yeah yes yes yeah. i made a tiktok yeah. and someone yeah. asked mm. uh stereo speakers or not mm. alafu yeah. nikaangalia ni kole where is the second speaker then the whole uh, the top that uh, there's a microphone and the, a second one which i thought was also a microphone mm-hmm. or an air blaster but then i blocked the bottom speaker mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and that thing is a speaker and it's quite loud yeah yeah, uh, yeah. The- when you are listening to video you yeah. actually notice yes, it very very video. fast yeah, yeah you get the stereo effect on that in the video i made i was doing my unboxing i mentioned actually two speakers yeah mm-hmm. it's- Good. The elephant in the room and what everyone who's listening to this will want to know. Are the cameras good? So, what can you tell them? Uh let me just be honest. Mimi napenda camera poor. Na hii camera, I can say the the best I can say about it is that it's okay. It's okay. I am not going to say it's the best camera for this price range because unfortunately, uh Samsung and uh Xiaomi are really coming for Oppo at at this price range right now. Mm-hmm. So, For me the camera is serviceable not amazing one the hdr uh, capabilities are not good two i feel like the sharpness we support hdr the hdr capabilities of the camera like when, oh. whenever there is like light from a certain source and a shadow from this source yeah it struggles with that uh, i'm just from trying that out as dixon uh say uh, maxis and max uh-huh. and what are you what do yeah, you yeah yeah can clearly see yeah it really struggles with uh Uh, that dynamic contrast where there's a bright so- source of light and a dark face some uh, then two i i still don't like which is greatly reduced by the way this time around but i still don't like uh the softening of photos that op uh-huh. does yeah it might look good for some people but for me uh then uh another thing that i haven't found particularly exciting with the phone is that though the camera is quite steady mm-hmm. There's shake and the shake is very noticeable when you're shooting a video handheld mm-hmm. so if you want to shoot a video with it yeah, you'll need uh, like a tripod or something yeah the and front we- camera mm, the front camera is an oppo front camera <laughs> <laughs> yeah and you need to make sure the uh, the main camera is 108 megapixels yes uh, 108 megapixels on the 5g megapixel depth sensor for the else for the 5g yeah yes and 100 megapixels yeah, from the 4G. 4G. This is the first time I have heard of 100. Yeah, on a full, on a... yeah normally it's 108, 100. Mm-hmm. Yeah. This is the first time I've heard of 100. And have you tried the 40 uh, 40 x uh, 40, 40 times, times macro? macro? Ne- I think that's a gimmick. Why would I use a macro lens on a phone? Have you ever taken a macro lens? A macro Yeah, I don't think I I am a microscope. Okay. It it goes really Let me, I'm t- testing it now as I'm talking and it it really <laughs> it really zooms in yeah mm-hmm. uh, but it's a gimmick but um what do you think about the photo outputs now you know from the f- uh, both cameras yes both cameras uh same same scenario i the photos are soft for me mm-hmm. uh, the sharpness and the detail i feel so good as i would expect from other uh, like If I say I was using another phone uh the sharpness will be better yeah the contrast will be better I'm not saying this is a bad camera by the way yeah. this is a, an okay camera especially if uh if if you if you just taking photos of people photos of pets yeah. places they look good but they won't be say very exceptional yeah. Yeah. I mean I mean they're just working you know that's yes. the, yeah they're just working yeah the portrait is quite good especially with pets mm. uh, <laughs> that's the best example i can give because there's a you you notice it when you're taking a photo uh, of a portrait photo yeah uh, after you've taken the photo the phone uh, does some calculation and then i think this should be working uh, without you noticing but you see the photo change mm-hmm. like you take a photo you open and then you see the photo brighten up uh, 
blur certain bits of it and then uh, so maybe it's the processor that's making it uh, seem like you it's working on your while you're watching but yeah the portrait uh works quite well though it changes certain features of the phone for example color it really adds a little more saturation to the color than i expected yeah i saw, i saw you know on the different mode there's an extra hd mode you know mm-hmm. as well there's a uh, the pro mode the pro I, 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 i've used the portrait the photos and the v- night night of course night is just okay yeah, that's it's not okay, like yeah. uh it's not like crazy as other phones are doing night photography right now yeah i wanted to touch on the uh video you can shoot in 1080. high efficiency and the maximum is 1080p on video which is weird for a 50k phone i expected 4k 30 fps at least shooting 1080 at 50k is not okay it should be 4k yeah <laughs> good any any other feature uh, that is not so mainstream we've talked about the camera we've talked about uh, the overall design of the device you've touched on the software if somebody is going to buy the oppo reno 8t as somebody who's spent uh, the last few days with this device what's the other thing that you've seen like if you're not on it pick what's the other thing that you've seen that is either good or needs some work or is neither here or there we didn't talk about the camera placement actually yeah uh-huh. the camera placement oh uh, the, yeah. the the dot here on the yeah, front it doesn't, long... it doesn't look bad but again it i don't know how i don't know how to put it but it's um we, you know oh, the design of the camera yeah the camera yeah hmm? i find it fine you know it, like, it, you, I, uh, you guys it, want the name kylan this is an, <laughs> yeah, i, no. I find <laughs> the the the, the pinol cover is just no fine. and i'll get you the back camera oh, the, the back, back camera, camera yeah, 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 back camera. Yeah. Ah. the main nini cut out at the top is the 108 megapixel camera mm-hmm. then the second cut out houses the both 2 megapixel cameras yeah. yeah and the led flash Fashion. when you look at it closely it feels off that the there is three cut outs on the bottom uh, yeah. camera but i think it's just uh, it's 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 reminiscent of a huawei design mm-hmm. sindio yes yes, yes. <laughs> uh, one of, one of the max 50 i'm um, it's something yeah. yes it's reminiscent of that it's also something uh techno tried out with the common but uh this one is continuous yeah yeah uh, on the common there were two nini yeah distinct uh cutouts yeah. my my favorite pet peeve is that without when it's naked without a case it, it wobbles yeah, on the yeah. on the table so depending on the surface you place it that uh, could mean scratches uh, especially to the camera lens uh, something like that but when you slap the case that comes with it in the box it's almost fine so mm-hmm. yeah there's that yes Yeah, but I love this display. Hey, There's something you must you uh, got nimekujibu. Yeah, um besides the mainstream stuff, the m- oh, main things that everyone things looks like, like what are the other things that normally people don't look at which uh will in a way affect how you use the device here. For instance, we've not talked about the virtual RAM. This device comes oh, yeah. with 8 GB RAM GB as standard that yes. for the then you can... for the 5G. What does yeah. the 4G get? 6 gb yeah device. it's 8 to 56 yeah. Device. Yeah. yeah and then um there is 4 gb virtual ram mm. and if you're listening to this and you don't know how virtual ram works is since this device has 256 onboard storage which will be lesser after the usual uh, system allocation and then there is the allocation for the system software and, the and all of those things that oppo has preloaded from google and from themselves um there's space that remains part of that space can be taken and used up on demand uh, it's where the virtual ram comes from it's not from thin air so when there is demand for it say you are doing something resource intensive and the system figures out it still needs to keep in memory some of the assets that are related mostly this happens in games because games you need to fetch lots of assets textures all those things that need to anticipate your next move in real time so in the event that you exhaust all the 8 gb ram Uh, you, you've got a backup of at least half uh, there's four more to use so in effect at a point of stress and high demand you have like 12 gb ram which is not strange you've seen this on uh, devices uh, all the while and of course this is android 13 and as we've said you get supported across four major versions of android so guarantees up to android 17 So yes the question to you guys was what are the other things that somebody who wants to buy this has to consider that is not so mainstream that we've already touched on 
on that RAM, I put it to 8 GB plus 8 GB. Mm-hmm. Other things that uh, I think we never get to talk about even in our reviews is that Oppo has always introduced air, uh, has always uh, uh, shipped these phones with air gestures uh, where you can swipe your palm to receive a call, all that. They're still present. Uh, they're just hidden under special features. I mentioned the guest mode, which I think is something I really like. So you can put the phone on both work email and personal email, depending on how you style your life. Mm-hmm. Uh, I tried out Android Auto. I told you guys uh, mm-hmm. my phone wasn't picking. It could be the head unit on my car. I don't know. Uh, the customization options are still really, really good. If you like tinkering with your phone, changing the font, mm-hmm. uh, you can change the font to whatever you font you want. Mm-hmm. You can have a third party That's app. That. Yeah, you can have third party apps to change the icons of the phone. You can name any uh, any of the icons on your app drawer to whatever thing you want to name it to. Change its uh, icons and all that. Android 13 brought uh, in safety and emergency, which under settings, you can quickly access emergency services. Mm-hmm. Have it uh, resp- uh, ask you if you have been involved in anything and all that. Uh, another thing that's there is you can receive earthquake alerts with that. That's basically Android 13. But mm-hmm. since it's off, I think it's my second or third time uh, accessing an Android 13 phone. I noticed that. Oppo is still shipping a uh, retouch uh, on video when you're making a video call, say on WhatsApp, on Instagram, on Facebook. So it can retouch your face to make you happy or whatever, look good. Mm-hmm. The gestures are still really good. I think gesture navigation on oppo especially with that curve slight curve displays way easier there's, a, yeah. there's a, talking about videos on mm-hmm. oppo devices there's an app that oppo has been including on its devices that looks like CapCut. uh i can't see it here oh they've been they, oh. they so 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 loop, so, so loop video yeah mm-hmm. yeah so loop videos is so i'm um, usually anti add-ons on devices but mm-hmm. the one thing that oppo has done so right mm-hmm. is so loop so loop is so good it. Okay. I've used it uh, when we did the trip with you guys to to the road trip to Watam, mm. uh, and the videos were shot at the ocean. I actually edited all of them on Solo. Solo. I, uh, I've never bothered with Solo. I see it and install it on Solo. <laughs> it's actually ne- next time before you install it, uh, give it a second look. But the problem is, I'm looks sure like Oppo sure. already uninstalled it for you. I'm sure you actually install it from Play Store. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, let me find it on the Play Store because it's the one Oppo op- op- app that is. So good. I don't know if it's their app or they partner with someone to make it, but mm. it's so good. Um, I downloaded CapCut from ByteDance, the TikTok parent company. And given that I'm already at home with Solup, I just deleted CapCut. Because you can do everything. Yeah, everything, everything. Yeah. And then when I bring whatever, when I export my stuff to TikTok, I can still add the music that's missing on CapCut over there. Because uh, Oppo has licensed all the stuff that you'd need. So if you sign in with their Oppo account, uh, on the Oppo device, they call them Hey accounts, whatever. Mm-hmm. Uh, on the Oppo device, when you're using Solo, you also get access to their own catalog of. Oh. Makes mobile editing so much easier. Easy. You can even blur voices. Like it's nice. Um, I've never been a fan of mobile editing, but yep. it's it's like Oppo makes it like a nice value add, and makes a big case for the devices it releases as being centered around creators, even though they don't scream from the rooftops about that. Mm-hmm. Uh, I also don't know why they excluded it from the Reno HD, but I'm on the Play Store, can't find it. Can't find it. Yeah. yeah. I, I think if I'm to restore from the Reno 8, it can, uh, yeah, or something. I'll, I'll see ways of porting it over because I really like it. Now that you've talked about restore, uh, I think this is the first time uh, when setting up the phone, I decided to copy all mm-hmm. my data from Google. It's not the first time I, I decided to copy all my data from Google, but this is the first time when after copying all my data from Google, uh, the phone set up itself with everything, including my Wi-Fi, everything I'd ever connected to with the other devices. Yeah. And something else, have you guys not noticed some changes on the always on display? Ooh. Um, ah, I have, I, I'm, yet, I'm yet to set up my always on. Mm-hmm. I, always, I set up my always on on the Renault 7. I did set up on the Renault 8. I'm just, I've just not used the Renault HT long enough to get to those levels of customization. But I made it there. What did you notice? Always on display. So the, I mean, uh, I'm not sure if there, this was um, on um, on the 8 as well. So I mean, uh, when you set it up, you can actually there's some information. For example, the music you're playing. 
Uh, no, 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 that's a new thing in Color OS 13. In Color OS 13. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Color OS 13 brings deeper integration with Spotify. With Spotify. Yes, 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 yes. yes, 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 yes. yes. Uh, uh, so that's a new thing with Color OS 13 and it's nice. Mm. Uh, it's good to hear the feedback. I remember writing about uh, yeah, uh, yeah. I, and now, another clarification the 100 megapixel is for the 4G. The 4G. For the 4G yeah. 5G yeah. is 108. 108 yes. yes. Mm. Good Nick. Uh, something you've noticed, uh, no one has issues with the chipset. Now we want to talk about the things yeah. like, um, <laughs> because first, uh, the fact uh, I made a, a TikTok about the device, mm-hmm. and one of the major concerns uh, from most of the comments has been uh, the pricing of the phone vis-a-vis the chipset used. Uh, we are going to get to the pricing, yeah. but now so, we, even without that in without, question. Yes. Yeah. Personally, as someone using the phone, mm-hmm. I am if. I was using this phone blindly without knowing the chipset. Mm-hmm. There will be no complaint whatsoever from me. I think so. Mm-hmm. Uh apart from maybe the fingerprint scanner being slow and sometimes not registering. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I not think that. Yes. Uh, m- maybe from that uh but everything else is smooth. I I I think you guys can bear witness on that. Yeah. 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 Everything else is smooth. Uh yes, the phone is a little slower compared to when I was I'm using a Snapdragon 8 Gen 1 phone. Uh, in terms of things like installing an app for example when i'm installing on a Xiaomi 12 Pro which has the 8 gen 1 uh immediately you click install it downloads the speeds uh way faster it's those tiny things like the speeds for installation on a Xiaomi 12 Pro are way faster but it's not significant to say that this is a deal breaker especially com- uh, when you look at the value offered for the phone at the market uh, price that Oppo is suggesting yeah so one of the people was asking uh on on the t- on, on on facebook uh uh where i shared my first impression of the device the 4G MediaTek uh the 4G version of this phone has a MediaTek G99 while the 5G has a Snapdragon 695 so uh this one is how much 38k 38 yeah. yes uh the 4G version is 38k and the 5G version is 50k so uh his argument was that at that 7k you can get a better deal and at 49k you can get a better deal all that are true but the thing that we forget is that oppo is also bundling a uh, value that stays over time like chenza said four years of uh, software updates is nothing uh, short of amazing uh, when you get a phone you want it to last uh, as much as it could uh, most of the competition is not assuring us of the same right now so i would suggest getting i think that extra sort of value that people are uh, claiming you're getting a low end so, uh, processor is attached to the value you're getting in terms of uh, that higher markup price is attached to the value you're getting in terms of software updates yeah i think you know maybe one would argue maybe Oppo could have done better but again the phone just gets everything right right yeah i think I mean, unless you 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 want to push the phone yeah, speed yeah. Out, i think it's smooth it's fast it's okay yes there's that the 695 then one um 8 gigs of ram mm. uh, i think it's okay uh, i wish they used faster uh, ufs 3 storage because i i i am meant to understand they're using ufs 2.2 but yeah ev- every everything feels okay for me for this phone yeah maybe, maybe one thing we really haven't tried out is the 5g just testing testing out i haven't accessed yeah. 5g yet mm-hmm. but i think when 5G was launched Oppo were the phones that were ready yeah, without any, uh, exactly. without uh, so it gets it gets everything right here yeah? so um Gente, anything uh, not much uh, if i said anything as is the case this day i'd be it picking but i think it's one hell of a fantastic smartphone um the few things that uh we'd have reservations uh, about like say the camera mm. and all of that are things that for me it's just still nitpicking because overall I'll still um my own operating is this and I've said this over and over times again it's becoming a broken record on this podcast and on the reviews I pen mm. is that um I just need a good enough camera that in Tatum Fukoni point shoot take a glorious sunset and i think this delivers on the sunset department and for the most part I, a lot of the phones that we get to interact these days are very very good in that regard i had the phantom x2 
and I have the Galaxy S22. Yes. And while they are they are worlds apart and they are targeting very, uh, very different, different market. Yeah, you find that the Galaxy S22, while it's a superior device, what it offers you and what uh, Samsung is asking for, you go back and ask yourself, should I spend 40,000 shillings more, 30,000 shillings more? It's the same case. So when you look at the phones we are getting these days and the overall camera experience, for the most part, it's very good. Uh, I'm not a professional photographer, so I don't have much of nitpicking to do from there. I've like the last five generations of Oppo smartphones I've reviewed, the cameras have been the best. Um, at least uh, as far as I'm concerned, all the photos you've seen me share on social media are mostly uh, short on those devices. And I'm able to have this uh, back history because Oppo does let me keep the device after reviewing it. So I'm able to see how it edges, yeah. how they upgrade it with newer versions of Color OS. Okay. And yeah, yeah. And the experience of the camera products on Oppo phones over the years. Is like they hold up their value and they're just good. You, somebody I know uses a uh, Reno 5 and that thing still, like when they're in any social setting, that thing still takes the best photos. So, yeah. And then that's one. Two, I was looking at the videos I shot when we were in Watam, taken on the Reno 7 4G. And one of the things, one of the pet peeves everyone has with Android devices is the sound quality on their videos and the video there is surprisingly good yeah, yeah. so this is an update to the uh, uh, Reno 8 series I expect the same and I can't go back to a single video I've taken with my Reno devices that I can single out as bad yeah. so I'd been it speaking if I'm to go that direction for me they've been well yeah and yeah I really like this yeah. When it comes to the camera, I, th I think Oppo pushes the Reno series as a camera-centric phone, right? Um, that's, that's the case, right? Uh, the Reno series is a camera-centric phone. That's what they use. I they think this type At the very, at the very, uh, at what the very start, they, they, they were very proactive about that because this is what they, they brought mm -hmm. to stand up uh, after what they used to call the F series, F -series. Yeah. which was replaced by the S series. Mm -hmm. So now we have the S series and we have the Reno. Mm -hmm. And we have the what's their flagship? Uh, the X. Oh, the X two. The find the find series. Yes, yes. And uh, Oppo pushes the Reno as the phone for most people. Most people, yeah. And with the yeah. pricing now, we've gotten to the pricing. Yeah. With the pricing of the Reno HT, uh, you know, we we've 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 talked about while we might not have had a full episode uh, length podcast on mm -hmm. those previous devices we've touched about them and in our reviews the one we'd say all the nice things like we've said about the Reno HT but where we usually disagree with Oppo is usually the pricing <laughs> yes uh, for the first time in like three years mm -hmm. we finally have a Reno series that's priced right priced. yes can you yeah. can you can you take us through the pricing Dixon there is 38k for the 4G version you get 8 gigs of RAM and 256 gigs of storage. There is 50k for the 5G version, which is now way cheaper than uh, yeah. because Kitambo, the higher end model was 59k. It will start at 60, 60, 60, 60, 60. We've yes. actually gone as high as 63,000 yes. shillings. Yes, so yeah. we're back to that 50k pricing. Mm -hmm. Uh, and the 4G, the 4G, we, we, 4G, the 4G used to be 42k. Yeah, 40, it's now 43 there. Yeah, yeah. So uh, there's a reduction in price uh, from Oppo. I don't know what has inspired the reduction of price per se. Uh, I think uh, Oppo. Hey, I, 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 I want to guess. I can't speak for them, but I want to guess. They want to stay competitive. Competitive. Because uh, right now we've seen techno go from 50k with the phantom x the first yes. generation from uh, two years ago to 83k yeah to a whole 83,000 shillings yes. and 68k for the uh the non pro uh, model. model yeah yes. yeah uh, so and then of course inflation our shilling uh, all those things so everything points to you to people uh raising their prices In instead we are getting everything updated yes. there are no ht but the, the pricing price, dropping. Giving a reduction. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I think they want to stay competitive because the reason we're making reference to other devices is because they've launched recently. They mm -hmm. play in around the same league. Yeah. And probably, uh, while it's not a race to the bottom, one of the best ways to stay competitive is to just undercut your competitors on pricing. Mm -hmm. And something we've always talked about is Oppo has been consistent with their Renaults. Mm -hmm. 
it means they sell uh, yeah. you can't be una, unona sometimes a company introduces a lineup forgets about the lineup for like two years comes back again op has always been consistent with the reno series and the fact that the reno uh 8t has launched in kenya globally uh, a part of the global launch is in kenya like we are among the first markets with the device it means this must be a very important i've said this in many yeah. of uh, this must be an important okay, market for the reno series mm-hmm. yeah so uh 50k and 38k and same uh, same uh, ram same storage difference in processors difference in cameras difference in fast charging difference in design uh, and when uh, actually when you compare uh, uh, this for especially the 5g that is open really now pushing um i'm saying if you compare now uh, the phone to the competition mm-hmm. uh, i think hope is giving us a better deal right well, what i noticed is that uh on on the tiktoks that i did uh a couple of people with the reno 8 complained mm. uh that i bought a reno 8 and it was 63k yeah yeah, yeah yeah so why is that one cheaper and why does it look better so that <laughs> uh, that's something i'd that, also be happy in arms uh, yes <laughs> okay gentlemen uh that was a wonderful discussion last remarks last remarks we need to mention that oppo also launched the enco buds 2 you know yesterday so i mean uh, when they were launching the um new 80 series they also launched the band um the enco oppo enco buds 2 that's selling at 3000 kenyan shillings and actually we used we all like all have uh, both have the enco earbuds uh the the old ones mine yeah, are from the from the still, covid and they're still, COVID and they're still very yes. nice like mine just work perfectly i actually love them so yeah i oh, yeah, me nothing more Good. Thank you for listening in. We'd love to hear what you have to say about the Oppo Reno 8 series and specifically the Oppo Reno 8T. It's the latest device that we've covered uh, fresh in our local market and we are going to be seeing reviews from all the three of us in coming days. So before those reviews go, uh, if you've listened to this podcast first or you've read those reviews, whichever you will do first, we'd also want to hear what your reactions are, what you think uh, of the devices. Is the pricing good enough to make you move and finally get a Reno this year? The Renos have been here since the very first version, so Oppo has made a commitment to be bringing each one to this market. And in the case of the HT, Kenya was even one of the very first markets to get it. So by this time, they've refined the product to the point that uh, we mostly don't have any qualms with it. We like it. We like the pricing. But do you also like it? Do you also like the pricing? What features are there that you like? What don't you like? What could have gone in there? What can they improve? Uh, any of those, you are free to shoot from wherever you'll be listening to this podcast or social media handles are usually right uh, below the description of wherever you get to encounter this podcast get in touch let us hear what you have to say and thank you for listening in till next time thank you